So, what did go down between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns? What did happen in the women's tag team match? And was there an appearance by Brock Lesnar? Ooh, here's Fastlane in a nutshell. Thank you for joining me, Lucas, on the Rebellious Noise Pro Wrestling YouTube channel, and I'm here to give you fast lane results in a nutshell. On the pre-show, we finally saw Riddle defeat Masafa Ali once and for all, and the disbandment of Retribution. Hallelujah! Garbage stable, garbage idea. Hope they can continue with Dio Madden and Dominic Dijakovic as maybe a Hoss tag team, a need tag teams, but I don't know, WWE, we probably ain't gonna get it. On the main show, the show kicked off with a match for the women's tag team titles as Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, they successfully defended against Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. The match was okay, but what was really about was after the match what went down as we saw Sasha and Bianca um, go, to, go to harsh words at least and then a nice slap around the face. And so yeah, it looks like we are getting a mania feud properly between them. So hopefully in the next three weeks, they have to build something up between them. Following this came a match I was very disappointed with as Apollo Crews, he was unsuccessful um, in his uh, quest to become Intercontinental Champion as Big E was able to defeat him um, in just under about five, six minutes, I believe. I think there might have been a box at the finish. I'm not too sure what really happened. But anyway, after the match, Apollo got some heat back, hitting his finisher on Big E uh, three times. So potentially this can go to WrestleMania. After this, we had possibly the weirdest thing of the night as the match got cancelled, then got put on again, then was cancelled, like the hokey pokey. Um, as Shane McMahon came out along with Elias and Jackson Riker. Shane McMahon was scheduled to face Braun Strowman but came out on crutches saying that he was unable to do so uh, because of an attack earlier on. Um, Braun Strowman came out and Shane McMahon announced that Elias would be replacing him and then we had a very short match between Elias and Braun Strowman which of course Braun won. This is a few which I'm guessing they're just waiting for Shane to jump off something at Mania. So we'll deal with that when we come to it. Following this, possibly one of the best matches of the night, we saw Seth Rollins have a very, very good contest against Shinka Nakamura. Uh, very strong contest. Haven't seen Seth Rollins on pay view for a number of months. I think some Survivor Series, but nice seeing him back. And Shinsuke, I guess for him, nice as having um, <laughs> a day out. Um, following this, we had a fantastic contest between Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. This was a no holds barred contest, and they utilised the Thunderdome to their extent. It was, it was insane. Uh, the welts of Seamus and Drew's body said it all, really. Um, I didn't really like Drew's um, face pain. It's like Vincent Mann has just seen Avatar, um, Smurfs, and Braveheart and put all new movies because I don't know, it, it looked really weird. Stop doing that, please. He's not Mel Gibson. Um, but anyway, yeah, Drew won a match which included taking a white noise. Uh, through an announce table, putting an exploding, a better than AEW, exploding lighting rig on, on the Thunder Dome LED screen uh, that Sheamus got thrown through. Um, it was brutal. These guys battered each other and, you know, just showed that they are two of the best brawlers in, in wrestling, really. Uh, but Drew has won and he will go on to face um, Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. After this was a match which I think we were all kind of intrigued by when it got announced as Alexa Bliss took on Randy Orton. Now as far as the intergender matches go, obviously it wasn't really a match. It was, but it wasn't I guess because it was clearly obviously pre-recorded. There were some cinematic elements added to it such as the live streaming falling down I thought was quite cool. But this match was about one thing and one thing only and that was the return of The Fiend as he rose from the ring, from beneath the ring. Uh, you know, just like at the end of the first Friday of the 13th movie um, when Jason's hand reaches and uh, <laughs> you know up to the boat, but you know look, this this was a this, this was a fun little thing. What it was, there was no obviously physical one-on-one -on -one action between the male and the female competitor, um, and let's have this one following the fiend's interference and the fiend actually hitting the Cesaro goal and Randy Orton was pinned. So this will go to Mania two. Then came the main event of the evening, which was for the Universal Title, as Daniel Bryan look to wrestle that title off of Roman Reigns with Edge, a special guest enforcer. Now, come on, like this was this was a really solid match. These two were always living in between the ropes. However, the story was more about Edge and what he'd do on the outside. And thankfully he got involved and it seems that we finally have a Mania program as Edge, he inserted himself in the match once the um, standard referee, kind of WWE official got involved. And then he was on the receiving end of a chair shot, in a Burton chair shot, I uh, must add, um, by Daniel Bryan, and then he snapped. He attacked them both, left them both laying, and Roman was able to get the pin just. Um, Jay also got involved and got a battering in this, so 
There is potential that maybe even a four-way at Mania, but definitely I don't, I don't see them doing Edge versus Roman straight on one-on-one -on -one now with this added heat to the feud. But anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until then, thank you very much. And that was Fastlane in a nutshell.